Do you know if you're ovulating? If you're trying to conceive, that is a really important part of the equation. Watch this video. I will answer five top questions about ovulation. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist answering questions about ovulation for almost 20 years. And there are several questions that come up time and time again. Today, I'm going to answer the five top questions about ovulation. Now, these questions come from my personal experience, questions here in comments on my YouTube channel. So if you have questions, put them in the comments because that's how I get this information so I can answer questions for you. And then I have a constant question and answer session going in my Instagram stories and I am just amazed at some of the smart questions and some of the most common questions that come up about ovulation and so I picked five that come up time and time again here on YouTube over on Instagram and just from my own patients so let's get started question number one how do I know if I'm ovulating such a common question I try to teach a little bit about physiology listen if you are not using hormonal birth control and you are having regular monthly pretty predictable cycles, like periods, then you are most likely ovulating. It is amazing that anyone has monthly periods. And less than 25% of people actually have a perfect 28-day cycle. But whether it's every 27 days or 28 days with a little bit of variation, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 29, you really have to be ovulating. You have to build up the hormones that communicate to the ovaries to recruit an egg, it takes about two weeks, then ovulate it, release it from the ovary. And then if you are not pregnant and there's no signals from a pregnancy to you know, keep making some of the hormones, when your uterus, your uterine lining stops seeing those hormones, you shed that lining and that is a period and the whole cycle starts over again. So truly monthly, pretty regular, predictable menstrual cycles is a very strong indication that you are ovulating. Of course, people can ovulate before they have a bleed, or people can sometimes have bleeding or a little bit of spotting or irregular spotting, and they might not actually have ovulated two weeks earlier. But in general, this pattern is pretty predictive of regular ovulation. And what's really important is if you are trying to conceive and you are not having regular predictable periods and you're not able to figure out when you're ovulating, that is the time to get help from your doctor and figure out exactly why and what you can do to help you with trying. Another way to know that you're ovulating is there are some physical signs of ovulation. Sometimes people will have pain. It's called middle schmerz or middle pain. It's a German word. And basically, as the egg is releasing out of that follicle, that fluid structure that's holding it in the ovary, the egg pops out of the ovary and some of that fluid can kind of come out and irritate the lining of the abdomen or the pelvis. Some people know exactly when they ovulate, they get a pain. Sometimes it's on one side or the other. And I've personally never felt that, but I have patients that are like, oh yeah, I know exactly when I ovulate. I get this very distinct pain and they just know, and that's called middle schmerz. Other physical signs are an increase of production and a thinning of the cervical mucus. So high levels of estrogen that happen in the middle of the cycle when that egg is mature, that will thin the cervical mucus and you have more of that kind of discharge or that mucus in the middle of your cycle. That's a physical sign of ovulation. So there's a few more. I've got a great video here on all about ovulation with more details, but just kind of that pattern and understanding physical signs can be really helpful to get you on your way to know if you're ovulating. Question number two, how did basal body temperature charts tell me if I'm ovulating? So this is great low tech tool to kind of learn your body and learn your pattern and learn your cycle. Basically, as the egg is ovulating, our body is at a certain temperature, after we ovulate and our ovaries start making progesterone, it increases our basal body temperature by a little bit. It's 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 0.3 degrees Celsius. And so in order to know that this is happening, you have to be really diligent about taking your temperature every single day. And there's tips and tricks on how to do this. You have to do it in the morning, before you get out of bed, before you drink any water. You kind of have to be lying still and take your temperature. You should really use a certain type of thermometer that's really precise and you have to chart it every single day. Something that's really important to understand is you get that rise in your basal body temperature. You'll see people do charts and they kind of watch. You get that rise 
after ovulation. So you should not wait until you see that rise in your temperature to try to conceive because by then it is too late. You want to try to conceive before ovulation, that fertile window leading up to and including the day of ovulation. But once you get that rise, it is too late. Very important to understand. Number three, how do ovulation predictor kits work? Great question. They are measuring a certain hormone that is signaling ovulation. So as the egg is maturing, the ovary is making more and more estrogen. When the estrogen level reaches a certain threshold, it signals the pituitary gland, this little gland at the base of your brain, to release luteinizing hormone or LH. And that LH has a big peak and spike. And that is what you are testing for when you're peeing on ovulation predictor kit test strips. So you'll have no positive ovulation predictor kit and then all of a sudden it'll be positive. If this is happening in the middle of your cycle, you are seeing that LH surge and that is what ovulation predictor kits are doing. So this actually can tell you before you release the egg if it's correct and if we're, you know, following the directions on the um, instructions on the box. If you're seeing that it's, you know, negative, 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 and it's in the middle of your cycle, it makes sense. Maybe you're also seeing the physical signs of ovulation that we talked about. Then you see that peak, then you're ovulating most likely the following day. It's about 36 hours later, give or take. A little tips and tricks. Once you have a positive, and it really makes sense as far as during the time of your cycle, you're getting to know your body, you really don't have to keep checking it because that surge will kind of keep coming from the pituitary gland and those sticks can get expensive after a while so once you see that peak it makes sense you don't have to keep checking because you'll probably get a positive test for a little while and it's really that first peak that is signaling okay we're releasing the egg the next day so if you're trying to conceive the day that you get that surge is a great day to try and then hopefully you've tried a couple of times within the week leading up to that peak because you're trying to make sure the sperm is there ready and waiting for the egg when it comes into the fallopian tube to be fertilized. That leads into question number four. Should I wait until I have signs of ovulation or a positive ovulation kit to try to conceive? And I just talked about it. So the answer is no. So the fertile window is this time period, the six days leading up to and including the day of ovulation, in which it's a great time to try to conceive at home if you have a partner with sperm. Sperm can live in the reproductive tract for up to five days after trying, you know, after intercourse. And the egg is only viable for about 12 to 24 hours after it's released. And so you don't want to miss that release. So you don't want to wait until you've got a positive ovulation predictor kit in order to try to conceive because what if the test kit is wrong that month? And you also don't want to wait until you've seen the basal body temperature go up to try to conceive because actually that's too late in the cycle. So the basal body temperatures are good to do for a couple of months, getting to know your body, um, doing ovulation predictor kits to figure out what day is most common for you to ovulate. And then, you know, hopefully you just get pregnant as you're starting to learn your cycle and learning what your timing is. But then you can sort of start to narrow it down and find that window of ovulation using these tips and tools and physical signs. And finally, question number five, should I wait until my app tells me to try? No. So just like basal body temperature and ovulation predictor kits, apps can be helpful for following information, but you have to be really careful. A lot of them are based on algorithms or assuming that everyone has an exact 28 day cycle and that means that everybody ovulates on day 14. So some of the apps you just put in the first day of your menstrual period and they'll say, oh, you should try to conceive, you know, on cycle day 14, that's when you're ovulating. But if you have 30 day cycles, maybe your natural day to ovulate is day 15 or 16. Or if you have 25 day cycles, maybe you're actually ovulating on day 10 or 11. So don't rely on an app to tell you when to try. They can track information. They can help you remember last menstrual period. And if they allow you to track when you're having signs of ovulation, you can look back and learn about your cycle. But I wouldn't use an app as the only 
way to know when to try to conceive. I hope the answers to these five common questions about ovulation helped you today. If you have more questions, I have an incredible resource for you. I have compiled 101 answers to the most common fertility questions. Fertility, miscarriage, endometriosis, PCOS, it is all there. You can sign up for it in a link below. Get the answers to 101 most common fertility questions now. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have. Be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly reproductive health video. As always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.